because I can feel his spirit moving in the house today. So let's get into it. Ever wonder why part five? Um, this, me- this series, I think, has been my most favorite series I think I've ever done in the 13 years I've been here at New Life Church. I have loved it because we have answered some tough questions. And as I've gone through, I went back yesterday, was driving home from Los Angeles. We did, we just did a night away, Lori and I with some friends. And I was going through my notes from the previous, the previous uh, messages and I saw an underlying theme. And that underlying theme is faith. Having faith in not what we can see, but having faith in the unseen. That's what faith is. Not what, and I've said it every message the, the last a few weeks I've preached. I can see the problem. I can see the issue, but I need to look over the problem. I need to look over the issue, and I need to see Jesus working behind the scenes. How many believe that today? Can you give me an amen? I want to start this message today by going to John chapter 3, verse 16. It is an easy it's a Sunday school, like the first, if you went to Sunday school, the first, the, the first uh, memory verse that you ever memorized was John 3, 16. It just, and you know what, let's read it together, can we? And I'm going out of the New King James Version. I'm going old school today. So we're going to have some thither than thou's in this thing today. So let's say it together. Ready? Go. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I could stop now and we could go home and watch football, but I'm not going to. You know why I can say that? Because my Falcons have already gotten their booties whooped today, so I don't care. I got to wake up to them down 24 to nothing, so that was awesome. Yeah, they were in London today playing, so it, it wasn't fun. But, but whoever believes in him, there's the faith aspect of this believes. You have to have faith to believe in something you can't see. Listen, for God so loved the world, I grew up with a very firm confidence that God loved me, that God loved the world. But there were times in my life, and I don't know, this may be just me, you may be perfect and never felt this way, but there were times in my life where I did wonder if God loved me. When I think about the things that I've done, the thoughts that I've thought, the things that I've said, the things that I have seen, the things that I have done, I've wondered, did God love me? So have you ever asked the question to yourself, does God really love me? Or wondered, how could God love someone like me after all the people I've hurt and after all the things I've done? Today, with the help of the Holy Spirit, I wanna answer that question today. Does God love me? See, if you ask the Apostle Paul what his number one wish uh, would be in life, he would say this, my wish is that you would experience the love of God. Let's go to Ephesians chapter three, starting at the end of verse 17 and go into verse 19, it says this. He says, I pray that you be able to feel and understand how long, how wide, how deep, and how high his love really is and to experience his love for yourselves. Why would Paul say that? Because most of the problem in, problems in our lives come from not understanding how much God loves us. See, if you don't know how much God loves you, it will cause you to worry. It will cause you to feel shame. It will cause you to feel some fear. It'll, it'll cause you to feel guilt and insecure if you don't know that God really loves you. See, if you have the love of God in your life that's only experienced through the resurrection power of Jesus Christ because that's the only way you can have the love of God in your life is experiencing that resurrection power because it is power. Because the same spirit that raised, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting off, off track. I'm not getting away from my notes. Because the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you. It, it quickens your mortal body and there's power in resurrection. So the day you said yes to Jesus, somebody, come on, somebody. The day you said yes to Jesus, that Holy Spirit entered your body and there was power. Because it cleansed you of all the sin in your life. See, but, mm, I'm off tra- I've lost my place. I need to find my place. 
when you have the love of God in your life and you have everything you will ever need both in this life and the life to come, everything. We need to know how much God really loves us, but how can you know for sure? How can you and I know for sure? I'm glad you asked because I have six ways, six ways to answer that question. Does God really love me? Let's get into that today. You guys ready? Number one, if you're taking notes, if you're not taking note, take notes. Uh, it's on the app. If you have the app, you can get on there and see, see the outline as well. Number one, he made me. That's how I can tell God loved me. He made me. Psalm 145 verse 17 says, the Lord is loving to all he has made. Did you get that? The Lord is loving to all he has made. God made you to love you. God has never made a person he didn't love. He made you so he loves you. Psalm 103, verses 13 and 14 says, God is like a father to us, tender and sympathetic. He knows that we are but dust. The reason we think God doesn't love us is because we can view him sometimes as a tyrant. We can view him as a judge. We can view him as this person who's sitting on a throne ready to throw lightning bolts at us and destroy us if we do wrong. But no, that's not our God. Our God loves us. He loves you and he wants to be loved by you. Our view of God, church, our view of God has to change. It has to change. God is a perfect father. He cares deeply for his children and he created us for relationship. He made, the Bible says that he would, he would walk with Adam and Eve through the garden on the cool of the, of the day. He would hang out with them. He would spend time with them. Why? Because they were his creation. And as it said, he loves his creation. He created us for relationship. How many of you uh, who are parents, because I, Lori and I, have, we're dog parents, we're not parent parents, but how many of you parents thought before you had kids that your kids were going to be perfect? <laughs> and you found out really quick that was not the case. But guess what? You loved them any, anyway. My mama used to tell me, boy, that's what she called me, boy. Boy, more, more, more my, my dad. Daddy called me boy. He said, boy, the only reason I punish you is because I love you. And he said, I know you're not going to be perfect. My, my job is to guide you. My job is to love you and to steer you on the right path. That, well, who does that sound like? That sounds like a good, good father, doesn't it? He wants to steer you. I'm getting away from my notes again. He wants to steer you on the right path. He wants to take you down the right, the right roads. Listen, our, our, mm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I'm gonna stop right now. I'm gonna stop right now. See, God created you. He already, when he created you, he already knew in advance every sin you'd commit. He already knew every decision you'd make. Yet he still made you and he still loves you. The Bible says he saw the end from the beginning. So he saw this giant piece of art in front of him and he saw everything. But then there's sometimes when you would make a choice and he would have to update it and put a little bit of paint here and there. And this decision, oh, they made this decision. I'm gonna still love them, but I'm gonna have to steer this. I'm gonna have to change this here. Every decision, every choice he knew. This is how God loves us. This is our God. This is who he is. He loves us. Stacy, I was beautiful today. We are all flaw flawed. We are all broken. And if you don't think you're flawed and you don't think you're broken, come talk to me in the tent afterwards and we'll talk. <laughs> See, we're all wounded and there's, listen, there's nothing hidden from him. I, 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 you can't tell that I spilled hot tea down my shirt because it's hidden today. but there's nothing hidden from God. He knows about every single one of our flaws. He knows about every single one of our scars. He knows about the secrets on the inside and yet he still loves us. God loves what he has created. God made you to be loved by him. He made you to have a relationship with him and he made you to love him in return for God so loved the world. Can somebody give him praise in this house today? 
Number two, he notices every detail about my life. Matthew chapter 10, verse 30. I think it's hilarious that I'm about to read this scripture. God even knows how many hairs are on your head. Herb, easy, easy, Herb, me and you. Yeah. God loves us so much that he is interested in every detail of our lives. My parents were like that. They were interested in every detail of my life. They wanted to know where I was. It wasn't because they, they, were, they were judgy or they just wanted to know where I was, who I was with. They wanted to know if I had a good day or a bad day. I thank God for that because they wanted to know what was going on with their child. So you know why? My daddy told me this one time, boy, I did that because I wanted to pray for you and make sure you were, you were covered. I want to know every detail. For some reason, we have gotten this mindset that God is only interested in us when we do things like pray or read our Bible or go to growth track. Just saying. We feel like the only reason, the only way God loves us is if I listen to that worship station on Spotify. But no, he loves us. He loves every detail, the good and the bad. God is very interested in every detail of your life. Why? Because he made you and he loves you and he values you. See, Lori, when she comes home from work or, or out to dinner or out doing something with her friends, um, I ask her questions. Hey, what, where, where were you at? How did you have fun? What happened? What, what, what some good, cool things that happened? Where, you know, who's, whose hair did you do today? Who's, you know, did, did they, what color did you? And she gets irritated sometimes. And she just says, it was good. I did three clients. Who? You wouldn't know them. Did you have a good day? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Some, but I want to know those details. Why? Because I care for her. I want to know if she had a good day or a bad day. Because you know why? As her husband, it's my job to cover her. Thank you, baby. I appreciate that. And then pretty soon I'm going, okay, that's enough. I mixed this color formula for this person because their hair couldn't hold this color form. She does hair. I went, I'm like, you're giving science. I don't understand what you're doing. When you're interested in the details, it shows you love and you care. Quick, quick relationship, just nugget. If you're interested in the details, it shows that you love and you care. God is always aware of every detail of your life. Some of you, you may be going through a tough time today and I believe God wants me to tell you that he is aware of you. He is aware of every detail of your life. He knows what you're going through. He knows how you're struggling. He knows how you're hurting. He knows about the divorce. He knows about the separation. He knows about the drug addict child. He knows about you, the kid not coming home last night. He knows about the spouse not coming home last night. He knows that about, about the person that you worry about, maybe drunk somewhere in a ditch. God knows and he loves you and he cares for you. Rest in that today. Because once, listen, there's a peace that passes all understanding when we know that, that God, the Father in heaven, steps off his throne into our daily lives because he loves us. He's interested in every detail of your life. Why? Because God so loved the world. Number three, number three, he gave me the capacity for pleasure. When God created the earth, he created it full of beauty. God could have made the whole world, gray, like today, gray and drab. He could made the whole world like you're living in Seattle all the time. Fun fact, I love the gray and the drab. I love it when it's foggy. I grew up in the Central Valley. I love it when it's foggy. I love it when it rains. I love it. I love the, I, I love the clouds. But you know also I love? I love when the clouds separate. And then you see the beautiful sunsets and sunrises. I love going and sitting on the cliffs at Pismo Beach looking at the ocean because it's the beauty of his creation. God created this beautiful world full of color, color full of canyons and vistas, the sunrises and sunsets. What was the purpose of it all? Can I tell you? It's because he made it for us. 
He made it for us to view so that we can take pleasure in it. He created us with eyes so that we could enjoy it and find pleasure in it. He gave you a pair of ears, and then he created a world full of many different sounds that are pleasing to the ear. We call it music. He did it for our pleasure. He wants us to enjoy it. Some sounds, not so much. I know people who love the sound of babies crying. I don't understand that. <laughs> but they do. I sometimes, honestly, I think it's cute when I hear a newborn baby cry. Maybe for about five minutes. <laughs> but he created sound and, and beauty for our pleasure. First Timothy. Oh, no, no. Oh, I'm gonna go, don't go to First Timothy. Liz, I just fought, forgot one. It's my favorite one. God even created your taste buds. <laughs> Look at me. And then he filled the world with flavor. I love food. I love it. And I thank you, Jesus, for taste buds. Because I don't want, I, it, but God, it, that's how much he loves us. Listen, okay, 1 Timothy 6, 17. God richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. That verse destroys one of the greatest myths about following Jesus, that life is boring, it's a bunch of rules, and zero fun. The world has been sold, the, the world has sold us a lie. They say following Jesus means a life void of joy, a life void of pleasure. Listen, it, I'm going to talk about this scripture later on in the message, but there's a scripture in John 10:10 10, 10 that says, The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come to give you life and that life in abundance. See, that shows me that God created us as humans to enjoy human things, which means sunsets, which means good clam chowder at Pismo Beach from Brad's, not Splash Cafe, that's trash from Brad's. I just caused a church split. <laughs> it's like all the Brads are over here, all the Splash Cafes on this side. But no, he created us. That shows he said, I want, I'm, I want you to live life and that life in abundance, which means enjoy the pleasures of this life that this life has to offer. In moderation, there's some things, enjoy it. Enjoy, enjoy sitting down to brunch with your family and looking out at a, sun, a sunrise. Enjoy, enjoy st sitting out in the cool, in the cool night air uh, with a fire, looking at a sunset. I come that you may have life and that life in abundance. Enjoy, he said, enjoy this life of salvation. It's not about zero fun. It's not about zero pleasure. This life of salvation, knowing that I'm on my way to heaven, gives me joy. I'm talking to somebody in this house today. Gives me joy. God wants us to have a life that is greater than anything. It's a life full of pleasures that he created. But the enemy, the thief, he comes to steal. He comes to kill he comes to destroy. He wants us to believe a lie that can destroy us. He wants us looking for pleasure in places that will cause us to take a road of sin that leads us away from the ultimate pleasure, which is God's presence. There's a story in Job, away from my notes, just hit me. God is talking to Satan, and they're talking about Job. And God, God asks him, where have you been? And Satan says, I'm paraphrasing, this is in the Bart translation. He said, I've been, I've been walking around the world just looking. What's it say? The, the, the enemy's like a roaring lion seeking those he wants to devour. The thief comes to still kill and destroy. He's walking around. I don't want to scare you, but, but he wants you to believe a lie. He wants you to believe that you are not saved. You yelled at your kid last night. You may have had a little bit too much last night. You flip that person off. You, you, how, how can you, when you're in the car, how can you believe you're saved, but you yelled at that driver who cut you off the other day? You believe you're Christian? No. No, God's like, no, I've come to give you life. I, have, I brought my son to give you grace, to give you mercy, so you don't have to live this life of pain, this life of, of worry, this life of shame, this life of insecurity. No. 
But here's what we do. We put our faith and our trust in Jesus. When we understand that God truly loves us, we can enjoy the pleasures of his creation. Jesus spoke more about happiness. He spoke more about true happiness than he did about heaven. He's created you with the capacity for pleasure. Why? Because he loves you for God so loved the world. Are you sensing a theme today, church? Number four. Cool, I saw 15 minutes. Number four. He has a plan for your life. He has a plan for each and Listen, if you are here, I know we, we, have, we, if we, have, we have a myriad of ages on this. I love that our campus is multi-generational. We have people who go out to youth and we have people, we have kids who go out to youth and kids that stay in here. I got, I got, to, I got to go to, to, the, to the Liberty High football game and watch them destroy Garces the other day. And I got to see some of my, my boys who come here play. That gave me pleasure. It gave me pleasure. Why? Because I know those boys' hearts. I've baptized some of those boys. I get to see them every Thursday or Friday and feed them breakfast with Collins at J&M's. I love those boys. Why? Because God so loved the world. He, go, he loves those boys. I, saw, I watch, I watch uh, Zeke, are you in here? Ezekiel, are you in here? There you are. 49 to nothing against McFarland. Go Shafter Generals. That gives me pleasure. Why? Because that's one of my sons, a spiritual son. I love that boy. I want, I, I, God made him. He's, ta- he, that kid is talented. The boys, the boys who play for Liberty here are talented. God gave you that talent, and that brings pleasure to a lot of people for God so loved the world. And they're using their talents for Jesus. You see them praying. I see them praying before, for breakfast. I see them praying before games. Why? Because God so loved the world. That's why. Uh, that, for me, that's pleasure in my heart. Okay, that's, I went on a tangent. So, and he has a. And here's where I was going with that. He has a plan for each and every, every one of their lives. Oh, look! What, oh, I brought it full circle. I go on. Ta- I, I chase rabbits sometimes. I'm sorry. Number four, he has a plan for your life. You are valuable to God. And he has a plan for you. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. I love the where it's in the New Century Version. He says, "I have good plans for you. Plans not to hurt you." or plan, not plans to hurt you, I, I will give you hope and a good future. So we need to submit to the plan. I think sometimes we forget about the plan that he has for us. And we submit to our own plan and not his plan. But the problem is that we, our plans always over, overtake his plans. But when we walk in our own plans and not submit to his plans, we can fall into issues we can fall into problems if we don't submit to his plan. Worry can overtake us. Guilt can overtake us. Fear can overtake us. Bitterness can overtake us. Depression, discouragement. But God says, I've got a good plan for your life. And here's why. You matter to me. See, if you don't get anything else, get this. You matter to God and he's made you for a purpose. You're not an accident. He has a plan. He has a purpose for your life. He just wants you to live by his plan and not your own. See, I grew up in a home where I had a, two parents who loved me and who would tell me I had a good, the good plan. God created me for a purpose and he created me and that I was not an accident. And there's some of you here that you didn't grow up in that, that type of home, but I'm here to tell you today that God is proud of you, that he has a plan for you and that I come against anything that anybody has spoken over you. You have a purpose and you have a plan for your life. The second half, let's go back to John 10, 10. The second half, it's on the screens. It says, Jesus said, I I have come that you might have life, life in all its fullness. I am the good shepherd. Don't just exist, church, live. Live. If you're not following God's plan, living out his purpose, you're not living, you're existing. You're not living until you know God's plan for your life and you start living it. Why? Because God so loved the world. Number five, told you it's easy to preach in the house today. 
Number five, this I think the next two are my favorite points in this entire message. Number five, he forgives me when I ask him. Aren't you glad for grace? Aren't you glad that he forgives you? Listen, when the question is asked, does God love me? I counter with this. Why do you think he wouldn't love you? The number one reason I get is this. I've done so much in my life that I don't think he does. I don't think God really likes me. That's the answer of a person who's living in guilt, who's living in shame. Those people will keep their distance because of the guilt they feel. Well, Pastor Bart, I, I, I can't have a relationship with God because of all the things I've done wrong. No, you're wrong. I, I could never be forgiven. No. That's not true. Romans 3, 23 and 24, yes, all have sinned, yet now God declares us not guilty if we trust in Jesus Christ who free, listen, who freely, freely, it doesn't cost, it costs him. There's an old song we used to sing in church that said, he paid a debt I did not owe and I owe the debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And then it says, and now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. Aren't you glad for that? That amazing grace, how sweet the sound. What's been keeping you from a close, loving relationship with God? Some of you were close to God in the past, but you've drifted away. You don't feel close to him anymore. Can I tell you, you just ask him to forgive you and he will take you back with open arms. Isaiah 54, 7 says, with deep love, I will take you back. There's a story in Luke. I believe it's around Luke 15. Where Jesus is talking about a, a, the prodigal son. A son took, a, took his father's inheritance and he moved away and lived, they say, riotous living. And he found himself in a pig pen, which in Jewish culture is horrible. Because they consider them not kosher, unclean. And he's, the Bible says he came to, the, 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 it says he came to himself. He came to to he realized I should have stayed home but here's the cool thing this is what I love about the story I love how the father loved his son while he was at home he loved him when he left he loved him while he was out living in sin and he loved him when he came back home hear this, there's never been a time in your life when God stopped loving you. He will always love you for God so loved the world. And, and he loves us so much of this. Number six, number six. He sent Christ to die for me. The whole crux of the gospel is that for God so loved the world that he gave it's the ultimate proof of love. Being willing to lay down your life for another. I, I, I think about this and, and I think about it so much because I have a friend here who has made me remember this and it's constant on my heart. September 11th, 2001, one of our country's darkest days, a day that marked us all. We saw, some of y'all weren't even alive when this happened, but we saw hundreds of, of New York City's firemen and police officers laid down their lives. What motivated them to rush into those burning towers? Dedication and love. Jesus said, there is no greater love than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. God proved his love for you by giving what was most precious to him, his one and only son to die for us. And Jesus proved his love by laying his life down for you. Why? Because he thought I was worth it. I was in my office before church. I looked at Lori. I said, I just got to, normally I'm out front greeting. I just told Lori, I said, I got to go to my office and pray today. I just felt this stirring and this song came on. It's one of my favorite songs. It says, he thought I was worth saving. So he came and changed my life. He thought I was worth keeping. So he, he 
cleaned me up inside. He thought I was to die for. So he sacrificed his life so I could be free, so I could know, and I could tell everyone I know. He saw you and looked at you and said, worthy, worthy, worthy. I know, I know that you, you had an affair, but you're working on it worthy. I know, I know that you're an alcoholic, but, but you're working on it. You're maybe three days sober. Worthy. He, he saw somebody hooked on drugs to me and he said, worthy. You could go back and watch Easter and hear his testimony. somebody in the Jewish culture say the word shalom. We think it means peace and that's only part of it. He came to bring shalom to our lives. You know what shalom means? I can't stop moving my legs. It means nothing broken, nothing missing. He came so that we would have nothing broken in our lives and nothing missing in our lives. That's why Jesus came. John 3, 16, one more time. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever not the rich, not the poor, not the black, not the white, not the Republican, not the Democrat, not the conservative, not the Republican. Whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I am so glad for that today. God knew we couldn't pay the penalty of our sin, church. That's why he gave his son. Aren't you glad it doesn't read that for God so loved all these other people? It's the world. That's how I know God loves me. For God so loved. Does God really love me? The answer, yes. For God so loved the world. He loves us, oh, how he loves us, oh, how he loves us, oh, how he loves us. You just worship him today. He loves us. verse. It just says this. He is jealous for me. Loves like an ocean. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. You feel comfortable? Can you lift your hands? When all of a sudden I am unaware of the Afflictions eclipsed by glory, and I realize just the words are on the screen to sing with us. And oh, how he and declare he loves us. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh. Say it again. He loves us.
eyes closed today. Father, I thank you. Lord, if there's anybody here who is who just thinks that they that you don't love them, God, I pray that you would just you would just let your spirit just overtake them with the love of God. No matter what they've done, no matter how they feel, let them feel your love today. For God so loved. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. And can you be seated just for a second with the head still bowed, eyes still closed? I don't want to give, after a message like this, I don't, want to get, I don't want to waste this opportunity today. If you don't know Jesus, you've never experienced the love of God. Maybe you've walked away from the love of God, or maybe you're living a life right now, and you, you seek the love of God, and you've just like, I, my life, Bart, I know Jesus, but I have never experienced his love. Today's the day you experience his love. I'm not going to call you down front. I'm not going to ask you to join the church. I'm not, I'm not going to embarrass you in any way. I'm just going to count to three. You say, I need Jesus in my life. I need to experience the love of God in my life. I need Jesus to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Today is the day. He died for you today. He laid down his life for you. So today is the day of your salvation. So I'm going to count to three. And when I get to three, I want, if you could, just lift your hands as high as you can today so we can see you. Ready? One, two, three three. Is there anybody here? You're saying, I, I need Jesus. If you're, if you're watching online, you can type in the chat, yes. I see hands all around this building today. Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. You may be holding on, white knuckling on the chair in front of you. Don't hesitate today. Raise your hand today. I see your hands all over this room today. Thank you, Jesus. So here's what we're going to do is, is we're going to pray a prayer. A new life. If you said yes to Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer loud with them. All right? Say this. Say, Jesus Christ, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Today, I receive your free gift of grace. Thank you for forgiving me of all my sin. I love you because you love me. And I pray this. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give Jesus praise in the house today?